such a pleasure to be part of this um, virtual Steve Pan conference hosted by Panotation and um, to be here with Andrea De Silva, who is a great friend of mine, who a photographer, and um, you know, who is uh, one of the longest established media photographers in Trinidad and Tobago with a great amount of experience. And we enjoy putting our heads together to share this presentation with you. Um, and also I want to uh, acknowledge that we got some input. Andrea spoke to the three um, senior editors, photo editors at the Express, the Guardian and the Newsday, um, to Robert Codayo, to Robert Taylor and to Jeff Myers. Um, those are the guys. And we, um, so what we are sharing with you today is our, our, our joint perspective, Andrea and myself, but also it has received input from the three senior uh, photo editors in our um, traditional print media. Um, and just to let you know, I'll be doing the actual presentation. Um, uh, Andrew is very shy, uh, as many photographers are. Um, and, uh, and at the end, you know, she will be part of the, the Q&A in terms of sharing some more perspectives. So I guess the first thing I need to be able to do is share my screen. So let's just see how that goes here. Um, sorry about that. And then to go to full screen. All right. So is that, is that working okay? Yes, Ready? we're seeing it on our end. All right, great. Okay. So photography of Panorama, um, this presentation is about considerations and recommendations. So the first thing before, you know, um, is to set the stage for something that's obvious to all of us, but we should state, and that is that Panorama is a unique cultural experience. And this photograph shows that I think, uh, you know, that atmosphere on the drag, you know, everything about all the people, there is nothing else like our Panorama, not just in terms of the music, but the whole atmosphere. Um, that panorama is filled with joy and passion. And this is what those of us who are in photography and in TV, that's what we're looking for. Um, and panorama is filled with this. And this, this joy and this passion, a panorama is also a beautiful explosion of human energy, you know? And, and these are the kinds of images we like to see about panorama. And, um, Again, here an image of Andrea showing that whole atmosphere that Panorama Final Night is all about. Uh, photography of Panorama is also capturing emotion, you know, because it's just filled. Everyone pours so much emotion into the playing, and in this case, into the conducting of the band. So that being said, you know, what are the considerations that we want you to be aware of? We want to frame this presentation um, with a few questions. And one is a very basic question, and that is, what is the purpose of the photography of Panorama? It might seem obvious, but I think we need to state what it is. Because for one, it's the media coverage, the traditional print um, newspapers. They, the public expects to see images. This is part of a very important part of the news of Panorama that there's the growth of online media platforms. There are a lot of online media, so we not only have the traditional print, but also online. We have um, not only, we have a lot of freelance photographers like myself who are involved, so it's not only people attached to media houses. And then there's the aspect of the archiving of Panorama as a whole. Pantry Bego needs to archive the event. Um, bands themselves want to archive their work every year. I mean, people like myself actually get hired by bands and other photographers do get hired as well. There's the NCC uh, as the umbrella body for, for Carnival and Pan is under that. They need to archive it. The Carnival Institute needs to archive it. So these are the, the main aspects of the purpose of the photography. Um, now, in terms of the what is the value of having high quality photography, not just any old photography? And I would say that it's the creation of imagery which captures the vibrancy of panorama performance plays a significant role in promoting the steel pan art form locally and globally. 
and that through high quality imagery, we can curate how the steel pan culture is projected to the world. And that word curate is important. And we have a role in shaping how we present ourselves. We put on our best clothes, so to speak. Um, you know, and when, as for, in terms of imagery, that we want to put the best imagery out into the world. And I, this is image is a great example. Andrea um, is works for Reuters, which is an international news agency. And this is an image that of hers that was used by Reuters globally. And so that the work of photographers um, get seen, not only through um, agencies like Reuters, because through social media today, you post an image and it can be seen all over the world. But Reuters takes it to another level with someone like Andrea, where it's going into those new services globally. And here's an image that tells a whole story. When you look at this, you can see the story of Panorama. Um, so one of the things we wanted to talk about today is that photographers and TV video um, have to work closely together. Um, there's, there's an increasing number of video crew uh, on stage today because of that increased number of online platforms, because Panorama is viewed via live TV in Trinidad and Tobago, but it's now viewed via paper view live stream internationally. Um, so photographers are there with video people. We can get in the way of TV cameras and vice versa. So basically there are a lot of media personnel um, in and around the stage during Panorama. What is the existing accommodation for all of these media people who are interested in covering Panorama? Well, there are a few tables and chairs are allocated to, for photographers at the front of the stage. Um, there's a raised platform area behind those tables that's allocated for print media and radio. Some photographers get to use this area in between performances. This year, there were actually video cameras on there too, because the growth of video is actually uh, creating it's important that there's a growth of video, but we have to think about how we're going to all make it work together because it can push out other forms of media. Um, there are two raised platforms on either side of the judging area for official TV broadcasts. Um, and then there's variation from year to year about being access, able to access the front of the stage in front of the judges to take photos. Because sometimes, depending on how TV cameras are set up, besides those ones on the platforms, that if there are TV cameras there, sometimes you can't go in front because you'll be blocking them, right? Um, so that brings me now to specifically the stage. This is an old photo. Um, thankfully, actually, Pantron Begut um, took measures for, for this kind of chaotic look um, to, to not be nearly as much of an issue today. Uh, this, this is over 10 years ago. Um, but I, I wanted to show an old image like this to show that there is all of this interest and there are a lot of photographers and media people um, who want to capture that magic moment in Panorama. So the stage um, is a place that needs, we need to think about it because photographers are trying to get out of the way of other photographers. Photographers are trying to get out of the way of TV cameras. Um, you have a lot of inexperienced photographers and videographers on stage today um, because of the growth of the online platforms, um, you have many more people sometimes who are covering Panorama for the first time in their life on stage. And all of us were there for the first time, I myself, but you have to have a learning curve and there are things that we need to be aware of to, to be able to manage your presence on stage. Um, there's still a lot of unauthorized cell phone phot photography on stage. So very often I, I will be trying to take a picture and somebody will just be in front of me with a cell phone on the stage. Um, there's also inconsistency in how Pantron Bego stage crew manage TV and photographers. And to be fair to Pantron Bego, it's a tough job managing that stage. Um, but you'll have some of their stage crew who are lenient, some who are strict. It, it, it varies, you know, so you never know what you're going to meet, even from one band to the next on stage in sequence. And of course, during the performance of the big bands is when the largest numbers of cameras are on stage. Another consideration today that affects imagery of panorama in terms of how we can do our job is that fireworks and other special effects are now really popular. 
And there's an increasing trend for big bands to use fireworks. And this, while it can be great and, and have a great visual effect, it can inhibit your ability to move around the stage. This year, the fireworks in the very front meant you couldn't get anywhere with one of the bands. You couldn't get anywhere near the sides or the front of the band. And you have, you know, this was when, um, and this is not a criticism of renegades. I understand what they're trying to do, but the, I'm just pointing out the reality of the effect of firewoods and how it can impact on the work of people trying to cover um, what's happening when the firewoods are at the very, very front of the stage. Um, you know, this is an example of, of that kind of imagery. And sometimes with all of the smoke and, you know, it can actually sometimes really obscure your ability to see. So the question, one of the questions I wanted to point out to you as like a reflection is to think about the visibility of players as a whole. Panorama finals happens at night. Um, and the, you look at this image of all stars, when you really think about it, you only see a portion of the band from the grandstand. Okay, and in fact, when I, I did some counting and you only see about 25% of the players in most steel bands from the grandstand, okay. Uh, this um, image of Angel Harps, each band has their own pan rack design and we're going to come to that in a minute. Um, but typically what you're seeing is the front line of the band and maybe a couple of bass players and beyond that you don't see anybody else. So this aspect of pan rack design actually impacts not only on photography but the videography, the TV coverage of Panorama. Um, Exodus took a bold brave move over 10 years ago and took the racks off of their um, band. Um, and as you can see in this image, it means today we can actually really see Exodus. Now I'm not saying that every band should take their pan racks off, but I'm sharing with you things that we need to reflect on that we kind of take for granted that things are the way they are. And we need to sometimes take a critical look at things to decide um, what really is the best thing. And there's, of course, a, a lot of historical reasons why, and acoustic reasons why bands have pan racks. But I just wanted to show you, this is a, a screen capture from TV coverage, just how much of Exodus you could see. Um, and by contrast, the traditional band is, of course, covered in pan racks, um, and you really can't see very much of the band. Now, of course, Panorama is all about sound. It's the sound of the band. But we all know it's also about the visual and more and more people are putting emphasis on the visual. Here, of course, again, I just wanted to show you another screen capture from TV coverage, All Stars. You see the front line and you really can't see beyond much of that in the band. Same thing with Desperados. The very design of the bass bands actually sticks out in the front. It's very important acoustically. And it even has its own aesthetic beauty, but I'm just pointing out how little of the band actual players you see. And by contrast, I wanted to share with you that a band like Silver Stars, I found it interesting when I was analyzing the photos, they have made the clear tops to their um, pan rack. So they haven't abandoned the traditional pan rack because it has that acoustic value for them, um, but also, that these clear rocks, they had to let light through on the players, but they have to have the acoustic function as well. And that we get to see the players so much more easily. And um, I was just share, wanted to share with you of bands who are clearly, this is from this year, of bands who are experimenting and trying to think about these things as well. So coming out of all of that, just we wanted to share a few recommendations, a few thoughts. Um, a media plan is urgently needed um, for the coverage of Panorama. I, I think that the, there is need to consult media stakeholders long before Panorama to determine the following. What is the best way to use available space in the grandstand to accommodate all the various types of media and that different types of media have different needs? 
and that our objective, our collective objective, should be how to create the best possible coverage access for each of the different types of media that meets the needs of each type. Because the media, all of the coverage is the ally of Pan, not the adversary. And sometimes when you're on stage, it feels adversarial, you know, um, in terms of trying to manage all these people. And, and we are really the allies of Pan. Um, and it's to figure out how, I think we really need to put our thinking cap on for how to best create the, the best media coverage that we could. I think one of the things is a very basic thing, and this is actually what prompted my wanting to do this presentation, is that I think we really need um, to relook at the stage rules and have certain basic things added to those rules. Um, so one of the things with the consultation with media stakeholders should be that we establish collectively what those rules are and that we and they are communicated to all media beforehand because it's too much of a free for all. And we understand from part of Trinbago's standpoint, it's very difficult to manage the movement of a band on stage, the supporters, the media, it's not easy. So it does, I think it takes our collective minds to come together on this um, and that all the stakeholders should get involved. A requirement for working on stage, I have come to believe now, should be all black attire, including shoes. Because this year, there were two video crews, for example, in red t-shirts. And in everywhere you turn to take photos, you were taking pictures of the band and the red t-shirts. And this is what really prompted me to feel that I wanted to get together with Andrea to make this presentation. Um, I think that this kind of attire, this should not happen. Um, and we have to consider that the media is part of the production. We are part of the panorama production. And if you go to a concert at any big concert venue, anywhere here in Trinidad and Tobago or globally, there's stage crew and technical crew need to be in black. And I think we need to extend that thinking to panorama. It gets in the way of the photography, it affects the TV coverage, and I think it also adversely impacts on the viewing audience in the Savannah itself. Uh, oh, by the way, I wanted to point out to you here the difference between somebody in all black and somebody in red. The guy in black in the front of, the, of those pans, you can barely see him, he blends in. The other man in red, you, he sticks out, and it, it really brings home the difference. Something else I wanted to share with you is that the grandstand is a problem all by itself. I think the grandstand design is part of the problem. And of course, this is a big infrastructural issue, but I thought we should share it as an issue. That the design is woefully inappropriate for the needs of carnival events. That the pitch of the seating is too shallow. There are two rows of seats on each level. It's really, really shallow that the pitch of the sheet seating should be much steeper, more stadium-like to allow greater visibility for patrons. And this will also allow for a properly designed media area, which is adequate for the needs of all the various types of media. And we know there have long been discussions of having needing a proper home for Carnival, a proper venue for how Carnival has evolved. And this touches on that. And with the existing grandstand, the way it is, we will not be able to solve our media coverage issues. And then just to wrap up with a few points, and some of these have come um, from uh, Robert Taylor, Robert Kadayo, and Jeff Myers um, of the Express Guardian and Newsday, respectively. Um, the fact that photographers need better accommodation, I, I, sh I shared with you what it was earlier. We, just like the TV, cameras need a raised platform. Also, quite critically, the media area needs to be secure. Um, it, it's a very open area. And thankfully, you know, we are all, we all look out for each other. But, you know, Andrea shared with me, for example, um, that she had a laptop destroyed because someone stepped on it in the, all of the hustle and bustle. And the fact that, you know, there wasn't proper place to put down her gear. Um, there are too many unauthorized people on stage and in the media area. Um, provision needs to be made for basic things like more parking for the media and easy access. 
Sometimes you have to walk all the way around and come in through the public area just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and the media should be provided, for example, with a soft copy in this day and age of the appearance of bands and all the relevant band info so that the people working in the traditional um, forms of media, whether it's newspapers or online platforms, can readily provide this. Right now, it's only received as a photocopy, right? Um, and lastly, that the media, for example, should have access to things like charging ports. We go through lots of batteries. We need high-speed media. Uh, Andrea has often uh, a deadline to send um, images to Reuters ASAP. And if she could send them right away from um, the Savannah, it makes a huge difference. So um, these are just, you know, and we could go on about the recommendations, but just to give you an idea that more thought needs to go into how the media is accommodated. Um, so basically to, to wrap it all up is, is the fact that we all need to work together. As I said earlier, that those of us who work covering panorama and generally culture and carnival, um, we need to all work together um, as professionals in the industry and with the major stakeholders, with bands, with Pantrin Bego, um, because panorama is really something special, right? Um, this is something unique to us. And what happens on panorama night, you can't replicate it. It's every year, it's its own magic. And what we really want to be able to do in photography and in the TV coverage, because the TV coverage of Panorama is critical. That is a very, very important part of the archive. And all of these points also factor in to how impactful our TV coverage could be if we revisited um, and gave new thought to how to make this thing as good as we possibly could. So, um, that's really it. Thank you uh, the, for this opportunity to present. We really want to leave something better for this next generation young pan player um, here and the many other young people who are coming up in pan that we will leave something better and create something better for them. And that's it, I think. <laughs>